Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren. I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios and in today's video I'll be explaining how I drew and colored this rose on the right using the reference picture I took on the left. So if you're interested in seeing how I colored this rose with pastels and soft pastels, just keep on watching. So I'm doing something a little bit different in this video and I have listed the materials and tools that I use in this drawing first. So if you're interested in pastels and are not sure uh, what materials you'd like to pick up, I have listed um, everything I used right here on the screen. And I do also have a list down below in the description box if you'd like to check that out. And as a disclaimer, some of the links will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you choose to purchase any of the items in the description box below, I will receive a small percentage of your total purchase as a commission. So getting into the drawing, I have a one inch grid mapped out on my piece of paper and the drawing size is a six by six inch drawing and I also have a small border around it just so that it's easier to handle the drawing after I'm finished because we will be doing a full background on this flower. If you haven't seen my grid tutorial video, I'll have it linked up in the eye in the upper right hand corner and also down below. But basically we're just loosely sketching out where the placement of the petals are. This drawing is not intended to be a very photorealistic piece. I'm mainly using this flower as a drawing exercise. So in most of my pieces that I do for fun, which are not commission based, I try to just have a one or two goals in mind when I'm uh, working on a smaller project like this one. And so my two goals in mind were just how to blend and work with pinks and how to really play with contrast and color so that the rose will really pop. So if you're doing a drawing, it's always good to have a few goals that you're working towards. So you're kind of giving your yourself a kind of a mini homework assignment where you're trying to practice maybe one or two areas that you're not very comfortable with. For me, I really struggle working with the color pink and that's mainly because I don't have a lot of cases where I am actively working with pink. I do mainly animal portraits, so that means I'm working with typically grays, browns, tans, white colors, but rarely pink. Maybe on an animal's nose there would be a spot of pink. And for the background of the rose, you can see that I quickly put down color with the soft pastels. So I worked on the initial layer of the flower with pastel pencils, but when it comes to doing large areas where I, I maybe don't need to be as accurate, um, past the soft pastel sticks are a great way to lay down a lot of color very quickly. So I'm using the soft tools that's spelled S-O-F-F-T, blending knife, and just basically pushing the color around a little bit so you don't see the individual stick marks as much. And after that background's done, I'm putting color on the flower with my eyeshadow applicator. So this is just a dollar store eyeshadow applicator. And what I'm doing is I have a separate piece of paper on the side on my desk. And because I have limited colors with my pastel pencils, I'm actually using my soft pastels in this layer. So on my separate piece of paper, I had scribbled several lines of color with the soft pastels, and then I'm dipping 
my eyeshadow applicator onto those marks I made on my paper. So my paper on the side is basically kind of like a palette. And so I'm loading up color and mixing colors on that piece of paper and then applying the color to my flower. And so it's a bit different way of working because it's not as efficient, I feel, because I have to constantly dip back into my paper palette that I have on the side. Um, but because I simply don't have the range of colors in pencil form and my soft pastels are too broad, so I'm not able to get the accurate placement of color with the pastel sticks, um, I found that working this way by making my paper palette and using the eyeshadow applicator is the next best thing. The first layer of the rose was with pastel pencils, the second layer was with the soft pastels using the eyeshadow applicator, and now this third layer is going back in with the soft the pastel pencils. So you'll see that I'm working um, back and forth between these two different methods and it's because I basically don't have enough colors in the pastel pencils to work with just that medium. And so kind of have to improvise and find ways to make it work. So if you are an artist for starting out and maybe you only have 12 or 24 colors available to you, I would say don't feel discouraged that maybe you can't make all the art that you want to because you're limited by color. Um, you can find ways to work around that and that might mean that you would be blending a lot more color and so you'll be spending more time at the early stages really trying to find the right combinations of colors to use. But I would say that don't, don't be discouraged into thinking you can't make good art just because you don't have enough colors or materials available to you. You might just, that just might mean you would have to spend a bit more time into your drawings or paintings to make it work, but you can definitely still do it even if you have limited resources available to you. So again, we're going back into that eyeshadow applicator method and we're also blending a bit. So, or if you're using a blending sponge, it's a little bit different than working in other methods because the sponge has a texture to it. So that texture allows it to pick up color, but it also depends on the texture of your paper. So if your sponge is more, I would say like a grabby than your paper is, your sponge actually has the ability to sort of erase the colors on your paper. So I have to make sure that I have enough color loaded on my sponge applicator so that I'm not actually erasing all that work I previously did. So I have to frequently dip my eyeshadow applicator back into my pastels so that I'm constantly depositing color instead of removing color from my drawing. So now that we're over halfway through the drawing, I am frequently alternating between the pastel pencils and the eyeshadow applicator for coloring. If you're having difficulty using lighter pressure or using a lighter hand while you're coloring, I would recommend holding your pencils a little further back. So you can see when I'm coloring here, I typically hold the pencil about four inches away from the end. And so that does two things. It helps me reach the interior of the drawing without having to rest my hand on the actual drawing but it also prevents me from putting a lot of pressure. When you're holding your pencil like a, you would do with a number two pencil or pen, you're really holding it close to the end and so that limits the range of motion you can make and also it it's very easy to apply too much pressure. So what I like to do is hold the pencil a bit further back and so that allows me to have a much wider stroke range because my wrist can move 
a lot more freely and it also prevents me from pressing too hard. If you haven't seen my previous video about coloring a rose with color pencils, I'll have that linked up in the eye if you'd like to check that out. I go over a similar process, but it's pretty much the same. It's just that when you're using pastels, do backgrounds a bit differently and layering is a bit more time consuming than regular color pencils. Here I'm using a pointed cotton bud to push in some of the color into the paper. So this cotton bud is much firmer than the sponge, eyeshadow sponge, and also the soft tool. And so all it, it's not really blending color, it's pushing color into the paper. So on the areas between petals where I, my pastel pencil maybe didn't quite get to, I'm using the cotton bud to cover up any of the background paper color that can be shown through so that my flower looks a bit more seamless. For the flower, I thought that it was looking a little bit dull and if you find yourself thinking the same thing about your drawing, I think a, typically a good solution is to start incorporating warm colors into your drawing. So here I'm showing the yellows that I'm planning on using. So I'm incorporating more bright yellows and dark oranges into the rose so that it looks a little bit more vibrant. So roses are a great subject to draw or paint or sketch in general because you're practicing a lot of good fundamentals and so even if you're a expert at whatever art medium that you work in, going back to doing a study of roses is always a great thing because you're learning or refreshing how to describe curved shapes and also layering and shadows and highlights. So there are a lot of good elements of doing a rose study periodically. Um, I like to do these rose studies if I feel like I'm getting a little burnt out or a little tired of doing my typical animal drawings um, because you're not worried as much about if the eye of the animal you're drawing is the right width or the nose is in the right place. If you're doing a rose, it doesn't quite matter too much if your flower petal is off by a little bit. I don't think anybody would really notice unless you had your reference picture right next to it. Roses inherently have a random randomness to them and how the petals unfold and curl so even if you make small mistakes with the placement of the individual petals it will still look very much like a rose so it's a lot less pressure when you're drawing something like a flower or a tree where you don't have to worry about accuracy as much so that allows you to have more freedom with playing with color which is what I'm doing here. So even though you roses aren't your favorite flower, they are a good subject to go back to if you feel like you need to refresh on the basics once in a while. So I'll do a rose drawing maybe once or twice a month and I have a whole album of reference pictures with me on my computer so if you want to find your own reference pictures, I would say visit your local rose nursery or rose garden if you have one. Um, but there are also a lot of pictures on the internet of flowers that you would be able to find. I think at this stage I thought I was done, um, but I took the opportunity to ask for feedback and I was told that my flower still looked a bit dark. So especially on the outermost petals, they were a bit dark where the purple was and also that my definition around the inner petals was not very well defined. So it looked more like a, I guess a blob of pink in the middle and dark on the outside. So if you are 
in a art rut or stuck and don't really know how to critique your own work, I would recommend asking a friend. Um, if you have an artist friend who you, you feel comfortable asking for critique, definitely ask for critique. And the person you ask for critique doesn't need to work in the same medium you do, but if they have a good grasp of composition fundamentals, they'll definitely be able to provide you with um, helpful feedback. And so here I lighten the outer petals by using a bit more of that light pink. And I'm using a dark warm gray to define the spaces between the petals that overlap a little bit more. And I think we're wrapping it up. And this is the finished rose. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. So I do have a time-lapse link down below where I have over a dozen full-length videos where I draw different subjects like red pandas, penguins. So if you'd like to see more videos from me, you can check that out. If you have any comments or feedback on this video, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're not following me on social media, I do have a Instagram that I update five days a week. And I'll have my handle on the screen. It's Potato Art Studios. As a reminder, if you haven't entered my giveaway, I do have a ongoing giveaway that ends this Friday, September 28th. So if you haven't entered, you can also head over to my Instagram and enter. I have a video on the giveaway rules and prizes, so I'll have a link to that as well on the screen and in the description box below. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.